콘서트를 진행해 보겠는데요. 여러분이 기재해 주신 포스트잇의 내용을 저희가 직접 어, 교수님, 에딘 베시모프 팀장님 그리고 김영수 대표님에게 던지는 그런 시간을 가져보도록 하겠습니다. 네, 어, 세분다 앞으로 나와주세요. 제가 질문을 하나 골랐는데요. MIT에서 창업을 꿈꾸는 이들을 한국의 청년이 만날 수 있는 법이 궁금합니다. So the question here, um, Bill, is the Korean youngsters want to know how they can meet the MIT uh, startup students or aspiring entrepreneurs. So first of all, this is fabulous. Uh, I didn't realize you were a world famous anchor woman here, and you interviewed Warren Buffett. Long time ago. <laughs> This is quite a letdown. <laughs> um, so how do Korean students meet MIT entrepreneurs? Well, first of all, MIT entrepreneurs are no different than any other entrepreneurs. I wouldn't obsess overly just about meeting on MIT entrepreneurs. There's plenty of great entrepreneurs in your own country. Uh, here, you've just heard from one here. Um, I, I think that you have to kind of, you know, you have to kind of date the the women that will will date you, <laughs> if you know what I mean. Don't go try to find MIT people and think they have all the answers. They don't. What what MIT students do is they pursue the process relentlessly. They have a very strong community, and I think you have to figure out how do you build a community. I I, I think that. The ability to build community, of course, it's nice to have a physical community, but I want to pass it to Erdine, and he'll talk about, you know, what you can do to build virtual communities as well, so you're not just limited by that, by physical things. But um, from our standpoint, um, I'm going to I'm going to tweet out the videos that show where you can see the MIT students. I think they will inspire you, but I think you have to build your own wolf pack here. Or Dean? Well, I guess I wouldn't be wrong in uh, saying that a lot of you are looking for collaborators, partners, other people to work with. And uh, the biggest surprise for us when we launched our online course was how many people worldwide are in the same predicament. We have a discussion forum in our online course, and one of the most frequent discussions was, hey, I'm to work with someone. Will work with me. This is my idea. This is my technology, and um, I highly encourage you to join that community and work with others. Uh, there is this whole world of people out there for you to work with. Not just in this room, not just in this school, not just in Seoul, not just in Korea, but you know, look broadly beyond that for sure. Where are the places? Where are the places in uh, Seoul where they would be able to meet entrepreneurs? Do you know, Hyung Soo? So there are quite a few accelerators now. Um, so it's it's really hot nowadays. So all, a lot of young recent graduates they they pursue you know entrepreneurship path. So it's not so hard to meet them, um, and they're so well connected through you know social media. So it's very easy to find like Facebook groups or you know like Twitter groups that you can connect to. So. And you are opening, you're opening a new center here on campus um, where there will be physical space to, to go meet other people as well as the virtual space. 네, 다음 질문은 어, 굉장히 로맨틱하네요. 부부 창업가를 위한 현실적인 조언을 부탁드립니다. So this one is for all of you um, because you're all happily married. Um, for the couple, like if the couple wants to be a startup couple, what realistic and practical advice can you give them? So first, first of all, I don't think it's a good idea to, to start a company with, um, with your significant other. I, I, don't, I just don't think that it is. And I think Noam Wasserman's work, uh, who's at Harvard, kind of goes through shows that you want a diversified team. It is so intense enough what, with um, doing a startup by yourself that one of the key things that I always found was to be able to leave your startup and go have another life as well. 
and not just have it be everything all the time. And what I used to do to, to keep my sanity was I, I would go and play basketball. You know, I would work really, really hard and then I would go leave and I would play basketball and with these people who had no idea what I did. And I'll never forget, Eddie the pipe fitter would, would try to kill me every week. <laughs> And we would play silly basketball games to seven. But those basketball games, everybody fought to try to win. You know, we played three or four or five basketball games. And you would play and try to win, do everything you did. And by the end of that, it's kind of like a computer. All the memory that I had had been cleared out, and I felt like I was thinking clearly. And then I would take my kids to sporting events. So I, I, I was able to keep my sanity through it. Um, which I think is I, it's a really important thing that you're able to step back from your startup, that you don't just do it all the time. So that's my personal perspective on it. I think Noam Wasserman's work at Harvard shows that you're, you're best not starting a company with people who are your friends and um, family. That's not the best. Start it with people that you've kind of been through battle before. And Hyun Su was in the military and um, in Israel, they have a very high success rate with startups. And, and one of it is because people who have been in the military together know what other people are like under fire, under battle. And that's a good test to see what, what you'll be like in a startup. But that's my personal perspective. I will defer to the other two fathers here. You want to go first? Oh, go for it. Okay. Uh, I'll speak in Korean, okay? Please, so they, please. they asked me to speak in Korean. So, 저도 너무 동의하는데요. 부부 창업자는 저는 권장하지는 않습니다. 왜냐하면 너무 너무 힘들어요. 너무 너무 힘들기 때문에 한 사람이 항상 위로해주고 달래주고 용기를 넣어주는 역할을 꼭 해줘야 됩니다. 제 개인적인 제 짧게 할 텐데 어, 개인적인 사례 말씀을 저 처음에 이제 MIT 졸업하고선 그때 어, 하고선 1년 동안 인컴이 없었어요. 그때 계속 아이디어 아직 어, 아까 말씀드린 것처럼 계속 우, 우, 우여곡절 시행착오를 겪을 때였었는데 인컴도 없었고 어, 영화에서 나오는 것처럼 지금 말씀드리기 좀, 좀 부끄럽고 이제 장인 어린이 계신데 아마 모를 거예요. <웃음> 모를 건데 그때 정말 다 무너져 가는 그런 집에서 원래 어, 세 사람이 사는 집인데 거기서 다섯 사람이 다 친구랑 다섯 시 같이 살았었고요 화장실 하나를 쓰는 집이었었습니다. 그리고 영화 같은 데 보면 이렇게 돈 없을 때 게스트에이션 가서 돈 캐시 막 헐값 받고 막 팔고 이런 장면 나오는데 저는 그거 볼때 너무 이해가 안 됐었어요. 그걸 왜 팔어? 그렇죠? 제대로 어디 가갖고 딜러한테 팔아도 제가 받을 텐데 제가 그걸 했었어요. 그래서 그걸 자동차도 팔고 그걸 자전거를 사서 원웨이 제 사무실까지 그때 어, MIT에서 공짜로 사무실을 내줬었거든요. 원웨이 한 시간 거리 자전거로 한 시간 거리는 거리 달려야 되는 거리를 매일 출퇴근을 자전거로 했었습니다. 그래서 겨울에 보스턴이 겨울 날씨 되게 험한데 그때도 막 정말 막 수도 먹고 그럴 때도 자전거 타고 <웃음> 출퇴근하고 했었어요. 근데 그때도 그때 당시에는 제 여자친구였었지만 한 번도 그걸 부끄럽게 생각하거나 당황해하거나 질, 어, 어, 그러면은 매출은 언제 일어나? 한 번도 질문한 적이 없었어요. 그게 얼마나 그게 질문하고 싶었겠죠. 왜냐면 친구분들은 다 예, 아까도 말씀했듯이 다 한국 여자분들 특히 <웃음> 기대감이 굉장히 높죠. 비교를 많이 하고요. 근데 그걸 한 번도 하지 않았어. 얼마나 하고 싶었겠어요. 얼마나 궁금했겠어요. 응? 매출은 언제 일어나는데? 야, 너 언제까지 자전거 한 시간씩 타고 다닐 거야? 언제 그만둘 거야? 얼마나 질문하고 싶었겠지만 한 번도 하지 않았어요. 너무나 고맙고 그때 저도 참 힘들었었지만 그 이제 와이프는 이제 워싱턴 디스에 있었고 저는 보스턴에 있었는데 매일 같이 전화하고 항상 용기를 북돋아 주고 그게 평생 갚아도 갚지 못하는 그런 고마움입니다. 근데 그때 그 만약에 그 친구도 같은 그런 어려움을 겪고 있었다면 절대 이건 될수 없었던 어 그런 사례라고 생각을 합니다. 그래서 어, 제 사례를 조금 공유를 해드렸었고요. 좀 되게 유치하게 들릴 수, 수도 있는데 누군가는 굉장히 옆에서 계속 인크레이지를 용기를 보도다, 보다 줘야 되고요. 계속 이해심을 굉장히 갖고 애 기르는 것처럼 해주셔야 돼요. 안 그러면은 이게 굉장히 어렵습니다. 
Well, I don't know what Hinsu said, but I completely agree with him. Completely agree with him. And I guess you could look at this question in two ways, right? Um, is, it a good, is it a good idea to start a company with your wife? And is it a good idea for you and your wife to be entrepreneurs? You can be working on different companies at the same time. She is a founder of one, you're a founder of another. Both ideas are pretty crazy, but why not? You know, uh, if you're looking to build a technology enterprise, you know, yes, probably it's not a good idea to be starting it with your wife. But if you're looking to start a small business, for example, if you want to have a restaurant and your wife is a great chef and you've always wanted to have a restaurant, you know, who is to say that this might not work? On the other hand, yeah, if my wife was an entrepreneur as well, she's, she's not, uh, she's working for a big company, my life would be hell. Uh, I, I know that for sure. But then, but then we, have, um, we have members of our community, Adam Blake and Annika Blake, um, two entrepreneurs, um, technology entrepreneurs. They have three children, and somehow they, they make it work. So I guess we could answer these questions by giving you sort of the overall data. But life is so complex, and you know, if your heart is telling you something, and you're young, you have many years ahead of you, and opportunities to try and fail and to learn again, just do it. 네, 다음 질문 넘어가 보겠는데요. 한국에도 많은 창업 지원 센터가 생기고 있습니다. 창업 지원에 있어 가장 피해야 할 것이 무엇일까요? So there are a lot of uh, startup accelerators nowadays and incubators in this country. What would you say is one thing that you have to be careful about or you have to avoid? So I wrote an article in TechCrunch. Um, if you just Google TechCrunch of my last name, you'll, you'll see it. And um, there's actually three of them. And it's called um, uh, Avoid Stagnation, Why Acceleration Trumps Incubation. And there's, there's a lot of data and logic that says incubators aren't necessarily good things. Because incubators are things that produce comfort, that produce warmth. And in startups, you, you shouldn't be comfortable. You should be, be constantly pushed. And this is why accelerators have proven to be more successful than incubators. So if you go into an incubator, be very careful. You know, I would suggest you read this article and, and understand it. But be careful. You, your, your job in a startup is not to seek comfort. And comfort can come from building a social kind of community. And I've, I said that community is good in general. But what's good about an accelerator is it's a community that's all moving forward. You have to keep moving forward. You can't just stay still. And often startups can get into this kind of steady state of not growing and not dying. And that's a very dangerous thing for you young people because you're not learning very much. Some would call it the state of the living dead. You either, either fail or succeed, but just staying in this in-between state is not necessarily a good thing. So that, that's what I would say. You can learn a tremendous amount if you intelligently fail and then come back the next time. That's what happened with my first company, as I mentioned. So um, be careful. Incubators by themselves and accelerators by themselves are not the solution. They're just a tool that can help you. And they're good for certain things and they're bad for other things. Anything else to add? No? Okay. 다음 질문 넘어가 보겠습니다. 신념을 갖고 창업을 진행하려면 자기 관리가 중요하다고 생각합니다. 자기 관리 중 가장 중요하다고 생각하는 것은 무엇인가요? So, um, in that sounded so beautiful, whatever you said. <laughs> So the question here is, um, in order to be a successful entrepreneur, you have to have self-discipline and you have to have you know, self-improvement. For all of you, or what does that mean for you? Hmm. No discipline? <laughs> 굉장히 정말 좋은 질문들이에요. 근데 어, 제 개인적으로 봤었을 때 가장 중요한 거는 우선 어, 이것을 무엇을 만들까 
에 집중을 하기보다는 이것을 아까도 말씀하셨었는데 왜 이것을 만들고 싶어 하는지 를 계속 매달리는 게 항상 중요하고요 그리고 어, 다시 좀 유치한 얘기일지 모르겠지만 초심을 잃지 않는 거 그게 정말 중요하다고 저는 생각을 합니다 그리고 어, 다른 거 하나는 어, 같은 정말 끼리끼리 뭉쳐야 돼요 그래서 계속 강조하는 게 어, 계속 강조하는 게 과정에 대해서 계속 강조를 하는데 과정이 너무너무 힘듭니다 그렇기 때문에 아무리 제가 체력적으로 뭐 운동을 정기적으로 하고 한다고 해도 정신적으로 무너지면 될 수가 없거든요 체력적으로 너무나 또 피로해지기 때문에 이 체력이 건강하지 않은 상태에서 이 정신이 건강할 수가 없는 거예요 근데 이 정신 건강이 제일 좋은 거는 뭐 여자, 여성분들이 많이 있어서 궁금하시겠지만 그냥 대화를 하는 게 정신 건강에 저는 가장 좋은 것 같아요 대화를 할때 이런 이런 문제가 있어 라고 할때 상대방이 저한테 답변을 주기를 원하는 기대하는 거 아니거든요 그냥 들어주고 수긍하면 그게 최고의 치유가 되고 건강적인 해결책이 된다고 저는 생각을 합니다 그래서 자기랑 같은 생각 같은 길을 갖고 있는 사람들을 최대한 많이 만나고 아무리 아이디어가 다 다르고 다른 분야에서 일을 하, 어, 아이디어를 만들고 있는 것 같아도 그분들 삶에 좀 초점을 맞춰서 계속 이야기를 나누고 공감대를 형성하는 게 저는 가장 중요하다고 생각을 합니다. The man of discipline, Bill, please. <웃음> okay. So um, the first thing, what, what it means to me is, is discipline is, um, is defined by not just what you do, but what you don't do. Um, what, let me just turn this off. By what, by what you don't do. Um, when a customer comes in that's not your target customer, do you take that customer? just because it's easy? Or do you make the tough decision to say, this is not the customer, this is not our customer, and I'm not gonna let us get confused by taking someone who's not our real customer? Um, it, it's, it's decisions of, we're not gonna add this feature to the product be, just because everybody is sitting around talking about it. it it's self-discipline is saying, um, this person isn't working out at the company, And even though I like the person, um, I, have to, I have to have the person leave the company. That is, fire a person. Um, I don't believe you're really an entrepreneur in, until you've had to fire someone. And I don't say that because I like to fire someone. It's a terrible thing. Um, but every, you, you can, when you do a startup, you're getting married to the people. If we did a startup, it's like we're all getting married to each other. And you can't get married to everyone. <laughs> You, you, you have to choose very carefully who's going to work in your company. And even if they get the job done, if they aren't consistent with your values, if they don't believe in your vision, then you cannot have them on the team. You, you, you have to make these hard decisions about we're not taking a customer, even though they have money, even though it would feel good, we don't have any. Well, then you've got to go out and find the one who really is your customer. It's those decisions as to what you do and what you don't do. It's being able to face the honest facts of what's, what reality is and not just tell stories about it. That to me, that to me is self-discipline. Of course, there's all this perseverance and, and the like. And to me, it's, it's also sticking to the game plan. What's, what's our process? Don't just leap forward and, and, and jump over steps because they're too hard. Do them. Well, to add to that, I'll um, make a distinction between, which has been made by a professor at Stanford, between a, um, a static mindset and a gross mindset. Um, a lot of us are brought up in an environment where if we fail, we believe it reflects on us as individuals. If we fail, it means that somehow we failed as human beings. Somehow there is something that, some, something about us is, is wrong. And the reality is, um, Entrepreneurship and many other fields of human endeavor, it's, it isn't particularly complicated. It's just a matter of perseverance, 
staying positive, um, building great relationships, and learning from your mistakes. And so, you know, likely for those of you here in the audience who will become entrepreneurs, and I hope there is many of you who do, uh, the journey is going to be very difficult. But never for a moment think that the mistakes you make and the difficulties you find yourself in, that they are a reflection of some defect in, in, in your human design. It, nothing can be further from the truth. Really, you can rebound from stuff. You can learn new skills. If you don't know anything, if you don't know something, you can learn it. Uh, if it's, you can find people to collaborate with. So, you know, yeah, do find yourself in difficult circumstances. That's how you learn. But, you know, don't beat yourself up. Just um, get up the next day and learn. Can I say one last thing? I think about this to be helpful for, very concrete for um, students here. I, I still, to this day, carry around cards like this. So if something's really important, I'll write it down on a card, and I'll put it in my pocket. And then before I go to bed at night, if it's really important, and I, I, I should have done it. If I didn't do it, then I'll write it on the card for the next day, and I won't want to carry things for three days. Either it's important, I'm going to get it done, or it's not that important, and I deselect it. And the, that, that's just one way that I, I deal with this. The, the other thing I would say is that, I was told by a, a guy who was on my board once, Bob Coleman, he said, never confuse activity with progress. Just because someone's staying at work until 11 o'clock at night doesn't mean they're productive, doesn't mean they're doing good things. It just means they stayed there till 11 o'clock at night. And if you can get everything in, on your list done at 5 o'clock, go, go do something else. Clear your head out, because there are going to be days where you have to stay there till 11 o'clock at night. But don't get into the habit, the lack of discipline of just saying, I have to work all the time. You know, this is, this is, this is the way it is. That's not discipline. That's just confusing activity with progress. So we have about three minutes. Um your final uh, note of love and uh, encouragement and aspiration for the Ihua people and the startup aspiring entrepreneurs here. Uh, 한 가지만 말씀드리고 싶다면 싶은 게 있다면 우선 첫째는 어, 자기가 항상 공부했던 분야 아니면 일해왔던 분야 알고 있는 분야의 일, 일에만. 어, 해야 된다고 생각하신 그런 고정관념 있으신 분들이 되게 많은 것 같아요. 근데 안트로프런십 정의 자체가 아직 해보지 않은 것들을 도전해서 만들어내는 게 안트로프런십입니다. 제 개인적인 또 예를 들으면요. 저는 어 지금 저희 회사에서 가장 필요한 역량이 디자인 그리고 엔지니어링 그리고 스토리텔링에 필요한 마케팅입니다. 글을 잘 쓰는 거. 이세 가지가 가장 중요하다고 생각하는데 저는 이세개다 너무나 부족한 사람이에요. 저는 심리학 공부했었고요. 그리고 아, PhD는 뉴럴 사이언스, 뇌과학을 했었고요. 그리고 중도 하차 했었습니다. 저는 그림도 눈 사람도 그리지 못해요. 이거는 사실입니다. 그리고 저는 심리학 공부했었고요. 이, 이과적으로는 정말 저는 어, 더센 뺄센 곱하기 나누기 외에는 조금 과장돼 물론 과장되게 말씀드리는 거긴 한데 외는 할수 있는 것도 없어요. 근데 제가 이렇게 회사를 아직 뭐 성공 어, 성공적인 회사라고 어, 말씀드리긴 조금 그렇지만 이만큼 잘 추진해 올수 있던 있었던 이유는 제가 어, 조금 어, 좀 거만하게 말씀드릴 수도 있는데 비전이 있었고요. 그 비전을 공감할 수 있는 사람을 잘 끌어들인데 저는. 가장 큰 이유가 있었다고 생각을 합니다. 그래서 자기가 항상 공부해왔던 분야, 어, 나는 지금 나는 여태까지 국문학 전공했는데 과연 이런 앱 비즈니스를 만들 수 있을까 걱정하지 마시고요. 아이디어가 있으면 일단은 한번 해보시기를 그리고 아까 계속 강조하셨던 것처럼 혼자 하는 거 절대 아니기 때문에 과정을 밟아가는 게 중요합니다. 그래서 같이 과정을 밟아갈 수 있는 동료를 잘 찾아오면 되는 겁니다. 그래서 한번 꼭. 푸시를 한번 해보시기 바랍니다. 아, 저는 여러분들이 정말 기대하고 있는 미래의 창업자들을 만나고 싶습니다. 많은 것들이 있습니다. 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 많은 것들이 있습
this is a highly educated country. And the Koreans, um, you know, it's probably politically incorrect you know, to talk like this in, in a, you know, in, especially in America, but I think Koreans are incredibly hardworking. Uh, we've, uh, we've had several Koreans working on our team um, at MIT, and all of them have been phenomenal. You know, they are the first person in the office in the morning, they're the last person out, and they're just working and grinding and grinding and grinding. It is incredibly valuable to have someone on your team. And um, so you need hard work, you need discipline uh, for entrepreneurship. And uh, I guess your culture here predisposes you to that. So that, that's a huge advantage. But there is another side of it here is that, you know, my understanding is, and, and you know, I've been here for 48 hours, so discount what I say, but, you know, it, it, it seems to me, my perception is that life is very rigid for a lot of people in Korea. Yes, you have stable jobs and good jobs and jobs with good companies, but um, you get in in the morning and um, the system is very hierarchical. You know, you're a junior employee and there's some boss above you and then there is a boss and there is very little you can do to maneuver and then you have to stay at work for a long time um, until very late at night uh, because your boss is there and you cannot leave before your boss. And so it feels to me that a lot of you feel that your life is just kind of daily grind and a daily grind in a way where sort of your, your hands are tied. But I think this is a great opportunity. So if you can start you know, companies and start creating a new culture and say, hey, we're going to do things differently. We're not going to be that hierarchical. We're not going to be that structured. We're going to let people choose. We're going to let people give initiative. I think a lot of people in Korea will respond to that message. And you will have droves of fantastic employees who are super hardworking, disciplined, and who want this new culture. And I think with that, you can, you can make something special. So I'm I'm very excited about you guys, and I think you should be excited about too. Well, um, I want to build off what our dean said, but before I forget, I want to thank, thank you all for coming out, and thank you for having us here. It's really an honor for us to be at, at such an esteemed university. Um, we, you know, we're proud of what we do, and it makes us proud to be able to come here and share it with you. There's, I'm sure there's a lot we could learn from you in, in other areas. Um, just building off what our dean said and then branching off is, yeah, Korea's got a lot going right now. Korea has been amazing. The economic development over just my lifetime, going from a place where you were, you know, at, at an economic level of Ghana to being, a, you know, a, a developed country that's just doing amazing things, uh, producing cell phones, cars, you know, electronics. It, it, it's my, my hat's off to, to you as a society. I will say that societies are getting less different, more, more and more you can go around the world and I feel comf just as comfortable in London as I do in Boston or San Francisco. And Seoul is very comfortable here. And young people are going to be the same around the world. I, I hate to say the same, but more and more it's going to be similar. Um, you all are here because you're interested in entrepreneurship. And to say that there's just one type of entrepreneurship, that's not the case. Um, we look at it and say, some of you are here, you're interested in entrepreneurship. We're co we call curious entrepreneurs. You're thinking about, is this an interesting career? Is this something that I want to do? We've talked a lot about what we call ready-to-go entrepreneurs. Hyung Su is a ready-to-go entrepreneur. He's doing a startup. That is one type of entrepreneur. That's what I did. That's what our dean did. That's a, a really great thing. But there are other types of entrepreneurship as well. You can study this and become really, really good at this, and you can go be a corporate entrepreneur. You can be an entrepreneur inside a company like Samsung, LG, Hyundai. You know, tons of, they, these companies are dying to find this, people like this. My, my, the book is being used by big companies to try to make them more innovative. And the skills that you learn will help you if that's what you want to do as well. So you can go start a company or you can be inside a big company. The, the third one is, is you don't even have to be an entrepreneur. You're in a university now and you can study entrepreneurship and you can be what we call entrepreneurship amplifiers. One of my students, Esteban Lubinsky, he was one of the most dedicated students I had. He is never going to be an, well, he, he, he doesn't intend to be an entrepreneur, but he has a family business. And he wants to know how entrepreneurs think, how they work, because he knows that he needs to harness the power of entrepreneurship. 
And, and, and another one, Devin Cook, is she's going into the government and she wants to produce, help produce more entrepreneurs. So you can be any one of these things or you can choose to try entrepreneurship and say, that was interesting, I'm gonna go do consulting, I'm gonna go be a doctor, I'm gonna go be a lawyer. If that's, that's fine, you're an educational institution, that's what, this used, that's what we do, that's what educators do. This is a great time for you. you should, it will never be easier while you're students to try to be an entrepreneur. It will never be easier. So you should try it while you're here, fail if, if that's what happens, and learn. Because it gets a lot harder as you go on in life. And the skills that you're gonna learn here will make you better, not just in business, but in life. Because, as I say, there's two types of people in the world. There are people who make excuses, and they're entrepreneurs. <laughs> and just learning, you heard the story about Erdeen, you've heard the story about, you know, Hung Su's company. There's, you can always make excuses. What you learn as an entrepreneur is don't make excuses. You just get the job done. Whatever it takes, square peg, round hole, well, all right, let's go, give me some time, we'll get this done. And that mentality and that discipline and that process will do you well so many ways in life, whether you become a startup like we've talked about today, but it's a mindset. It's a, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a heart thing, but then it's a head and it's a hand and it's also a community. And so you can do it. So yes, you can. And Korea's taken on much more stringent, um, much harder challenges and succeeded. And I am totally confident that you will succeed in producing entrepreneurs too. So thank you again for having us. It's been our huge honor. Thank you. 오늘 특별한 시간을 제공해 주시기 위해서 20시간이나 비행기를 타고 오신 이세 분께 다시 한번 큰 박수 부탁드립니다.